Bye Bye Birdie is a musical that we have been talking about doing for three years. We did a workshop of it with Bobby Longbottom directing, and it went really well. We uh, wanted to get the right artist to work with Bobby, in this case John Stamos and um, Gina Gershon and Bill Irwin, Jane Howdyshell, Dee Hody. Um, and uh, we decided about a year and a half ago that it would be nice, sort of perfect for Bye Bye Birdie to open our new theater. Um, and so we've been waiting for a year and a half for the theater to be ready. It is now. And the Henry Miller Theater will reopen. Uh, it's a beautiful state-of-the-art thousand-seat theater, really stunning space, with Bye Bye Birdie in September. Ironically, it's the first uh, New York production of Bye Bye Birdie in 49 years since the original production on Broadway. So while it's a musical that many people know from high schools and colleges, it'll be the first opportunity for many people to see a uh, Broadway-level production of this sort of classic musical. And much like Pajama Game, we are not trying to deconstruct it or change the period of the piece. It will be done uh, in period in the early 60s, and hopefully it will be a celebration of that innocence and that time period. Opening almost at the same time um, at the American Airlines is After Miss Julie. This is a play actually also we've been looking at for a few years. It's an uh, version of Strindberg's Miss Julie that the great playwright, great British playwright, Patrick Marber has updated to the 1940s. And I think it makes it a little bit more accessible and a little bit more fun for the audience. It is a play about sex, uh, class and sex. When you're doing a play called After Miss Julie, it's very important to know who your Miss Julie is going to be. Um, and we did a workshop, really a reading, of After Miss Julie uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe a year ago, and we asked Sienna Miller to come over from England and do the reading for us, and she did the reading, and she just blew us all away, and we knew we had to have her play the role of Miss Julie. It's a very busy fall at the roundabout. At Studio 54, uh, we'll be doing Carrie Fisher's one-woman show, Wishful Drinking, about her adventures and misadventures in life. It's a very personal, funny play about um, the trials and tribulations of being uh, Carrie Fisher and being Princess Leia and being the daughter of uh, Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher. And um, it's a show that I saw in Seattle over the winter and asked her if she was interested in coming to Broadway and she said yes. And Studio 54 has a lot of meaning to her personally since that's where she met her husband Paul Simon. And um, so I'm sure there'll be a whole Studio 54 section added, especially for our production. And I think it's going to be a funny, moving uh, evening of theater. Also around the same time, a few weeks later in October, um, a play called The Understudy by a great playwright, Teresa Rebeck. It's a new play. Uh, Scott Ellis has been developing it for a while. We did a reading of it at one of our Monday night readings that we do for our donors. And I guess that was at least two years ago. And Julie White did the reading. And we said, we really want to do this play, but we really want to do it with you. And I'm very excited to be doing uh, this new play. It sort of takes you backstage at a theater, and you sort of see the sordid underbelly of, uh, of what goes on backstage with an actor and an understudy, and Julie White playing the stage manager, uh, who plays a very prominent role in theatrical productions, but usually not uh, in plays written about theater. But in this case, the stage manager is very much featured, and I think it's a fun also moving look at, uh, at the workings of uh, professional theater. Victor Garber, who's a great actor, who has wanted to do Present Laughter for a number of years. Victor Garber plays one of the most legendary creatures in Noel Coward Stable, the egomaniac actor. It's guaranteed to be a funny, really superb production. Coming to the Pels in the winter will be Long Wharf Theater's uh, production of The Glass Menagerie. I went with some trepidation because I've seen a lot of Glass Menageries, but Judy Ivey gave a performance as Amanda Wingfield um, that was truly transcendent, w without question the best Amanda I've ever seen. And Gordon Edelstein did a stunning job directing it. His staging of it, you really understand what it means uh, that Glass Menagerie is a memory play. The roundabout season is put together uh, with a number of factors in mind. We are a subscriber-based organization, so we're always thinking about 
putting together a balanced season of shows that our subscribers will enjoy that uh, represent a variety of theatrical styles and from uh, a variety of time periods. Um, it's a complicated process because uh, a lot of the plays that we do depend on the actors and directors that we want to do them. And uh, we have to get them to commit in advance to doing a show at Roundabout uh, where they get paid very little. They just get the artistic rewards of doing it. And um, they're very busy people. So the, the trick is to put together uh, a balanced season, but also to get the artists that you want to do them.